Welcome to the Successful Real Estate Broker Podcast, where we learn about some success stories and some not so successful stories. But either way, we learn. Each episode, we talk with successful real estate agents and vendors about things they have done to make them successful and some things they did that you might want to avoid. Join us for each episode of the Successful Real Estate Broker Podcast with your host, Preston Sandlin. All right. Well, thank you guys for tuning in to the Successful Real Estate Broker Podcast. Special treat for you today, a buddy of mine that I've, I've, we've sponsored a lot of stuff together, uh, Justin Kazepas. Did I say it right? <laughs> you did. Yes, sir. Good job. Everybody knows Justin, because as far as I know, Justin is the only, I could be wrong about this, but as far as I know, the only uh, mobile closing attorney, is that in, in our area, is that correct? I would hope so, uh, Preston, because I have the state trademark on the mobile closer, so if there is somebody else marketing that, I'm going to have to get on the phone with my trademark attorney and make some other calls. So there you go. There you go. Well, I want to get into that for sure. And I've, I've seen it. I've toured the mobile office. I think it's pretty awesome. But before we get into all that, uh, if, if there's like three people out there who don't know who you are, uh, to give us a little background. Who is Justin? Where did he come from? And how, how'd you get into real, real estate law? Yeah. Um, so I was uh, born in California, but moved out to North Carolina when I was so young that this is all I know. Um, so I grew up around the Charlotte area and Lake Norman area, and uh, this is home for me. So I uh, went through CMS and then went off to Appalachian State, came back to Charlotte, decided never to leave again, uh, went to Charlotte Law before they closed. And uh, that's where I got my law degree. In between um, Appalachian State and Charlotte Law, I was, um, got my real estate broker license. Um, my, my dad was a real estate broker, also a loan officer in California, decided to continue on as a broker here in North Carolina. So real estate's what I grew up with. And for whatever crazy reason, I decided to be a second generation uh, real estate entrepreneur. So this is this is where I'm at now. No turning back now, right, Preston? There you go. There you go. Same, <laughs> same here. I, I'm not very qualified to do anything else. <laughs> that maybe wear crazy pants and something. I don't know. Well, well, you know, that's a good thing though. You know, you got to have a little crazy to, to in you to do this job. So I can't fault you for that. So. There you go. You got to differentiate yourself somehow. <laughs> well, before we get into how you differentiate yourself, I, I got to ask you, 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 you bound to be a big Mountaineers football fan. Are, are, is that, am I correct in that? I, it was a, I had a great weekend last weekend. I, I uh, it, well, this past weekend wasn't as good. The weekend before with ECU was fantastic. A little disappointed with the Miami game, but but y'all um, y'all gave them a run, didn't you? They were ranked like. Uh, yeah, but see, I guess that's what it was. I wanted us to be ranked, Preston, and I said to yeah. myself, if we beat Miami, we're gonna get ranked. And then you know, 25-23 is admirable. It was a great game. I mean, it, it's it's great to see Appalachian be where they're at now, and just the growth that that's occurred since I've been since I went there. So it's great. There you go. I remember a couple of well, well, I could say like three years ago, and it could really be ten. But I remember when they beat Michigan, and Michigan was number five. And this was right. back, you know, when Appalachian, you know, wasn't considered a big. I mean, you know, now there are, people know who they are, but at that point, yeah. I mean, that was that was probably like a, you know, they were that, that may have been their homecoming for all I know. I mean, I'm sure they didn't expect much from some little school in the mountains in North Carolina. They didn't. And that's, you know, in the early 2000s, thankfully, um, when, then after that, when I went to Appalachian, the tuition was still low enough that I could afford to go to that school. I don't know about now. And the standards are higher now, too. So I don't know if I'd even get in, to be honest with you. But yeah, that no, was a great school. <laughs> same, same. I went to yeah. UNCG and I don't, I don't, I don't. I a great school. And I got a daughter, um, you know, I got one at Clemson and one's a senior in high school and she wants to go to either app or uh, Wilmington. And I'm looking at the scores and stuff. I mean, she's got them and both daughters had them, but yeah. my grades wouldn't get me in anywhere. I'm, I, I wouldn't get in oh, anywhere. Forget grades, Preston. Back when I went, you didn't have to write an essay when applying, which was one of the positives for me. But now, so now I don't even think I get my application completed at this point. So there you go. There you go. Yeah. That, I, there, were, there were a couple of places that you had to write back then and I didn't even apply there. <laughs> I think it was like Carolina. I didn't have the grades for that. Anyway. <laughs> but anyway, awesome. So you came back and uh, you went to Charlotte uh, uh, Law. Now, that I remember with that. Wasn't that right down there um, off Wilkinson kind of? It was. The first original building there was off Wilkinson and then they moved to Center City on College Street. Um, 
and uh, they were um, the bb and building, I think, or across from the bb and It was connected where the Overstreet Mall is. It was one of the buildings there. I can't remember which exact building it was, but the name of the building off the top of my head. But yeah, it was it was original Wilkinson, then they moved to Center City. Gotcha. Were you classmates with, uh, what's the lady who, is it Michelle, What's the, that works down at the uh, Canopy? She went down, she went too, but I don't know if you guys were there at the same time. I mean, uh, you know, I'll be honest with you, Preston, it, it's, it's very likely we were there at the same time. I think my graduating class in 2015 had, I want to say 400. So it was definitely uh, some stuff going on that people question. And anybody who's been to law school would say to themselves, 400 in a graduating class of law school. Um, there, there was definitely some, some questions to be had at that point, but different conversation for a different day. So, gotcha, yeah. gotcha. all right. So you, you get out of law school and did you uh, go into real estate law right away? Did you work for somebody else? Did you start your own? How, how did that go? Yeah. So, uh, again, the craziness inside of me, I wanted to continue in real estate cause that's what I really knew by the time I got out. Now I, I had this dream of going into criminal law. Um, I interned at the public defender's office and then a local um, uh, defense attorney, Robert Corbett, and uh, high, higher level felonies right in the courtroom a lot. I really enjoyed the, the process and, and kind of went, went in, into that. But then when I got out, I uh, quickly realized I actually have to get a job now. So I decided to, to what, what, I, what they call hang my own shingle. And so right. I opened up Kazepis Law in May of 2016 after graduating and passing the bar in 2015. And um, so since then, I've had my own shingle hung. I've been in Burkdale Village in Huntersville the entire time for our brick and mortar and have done mobile closing since the beginning. Preston, I started off in the back of my uh, little 2001 Jeep Grand Cherokee, believe it or not, had a little uh, car battery and an inverter that I could plug in my little laptop and printer. And I, I'll never forget uh, my first closing I ever did, Preston, believe it or not, was at six o'clock on a Friday night on South End. And uh, I was determined to get that closing done, Preston. I'll be honest, it was the, for one, it was the only one I had, right? So I put everything into it. Uh, but six o'clock on a Friday night, uh, May of 2016, my first closing ever. And it was a mobile. So ever since then, I never looked back. Awesome. So now what, uh, what gave you the idea? I mean, obviously, you, you, I, I mean, I think it's fantastic. But what, before this was out there, what, what gave you the idea? Or did you kind of back into it? What, what, how do you, how'd you come up with this? Yeah, so, so for me, um, I, I really lend a lot of, um, of the success to the education I had, and not just formal, but, but the informal experience of working in real estate before becoming a real estate attorney. So as a, as a broker, um, and I believe you're an active broker as well, aren't you? I am. I am. Just yeah. so I have the key way back, you know. There you go. <laughs> yeah. So uh, in 2012, when I got my license, I um, said to myself, wow, this is cool. And I learned a lot about the process of then becoming an attorney. I was like, man, what, what, what can I, how can I differentiate myself? And um, it came down to why do agents have to go to the attorney's office? You right. know, I think there's this old school mantra of like, oh, I am the attorney. Welcome. Come sit down on my mahogany furniture and sip brandy while you wait on your paperwork to come out you and water? you. Yes. So for me, it was just about the experience, right? Like what, what can I do differently from an experience perspective? Because buying a house is a big deal. You yeah. know what I mean? And especially in this market, as emotional it is, right? We're really seeing how big of a deal it is to buy and sell real estate. And so to pr uh, create an environment and an experience unlike anyone else can do was one of my top goals at the same time while providing the utmost quality of service. Awesome. Well, now, obviously, you've graduated from that Jeep Cherokee. Uh, okay. Tell us about the mahogany uh, the mobile yeah. office that you have now. Tell, tell me, tell us about it. Paint, paint, paint the picture for the people who haven't seen it. Yeah. So, so it's funny. So I wear a suit every day, but if like you ever see me outside, you probably like, you know, uh, wonder who's that creeper guy walking around in a bucket hat and gym shorts. So typically like the suit is a get up here at the office, but at home, you know, I'm incognito, but no. So for after the Jeep, I, I was finally able to really get going and, and we, I decided to go with the Ford Transit um, cargo van is what we decided to go with. We looked at all the different cargo van options. Ford, um, in addition to just the quality of the van, you know, they have a great, uh, um, uh, excuse me, warranty on the van, Rich, you know, so I, it's, I thought to myself, you know, if I'm going to be on the road all the time, I'm probably going to get a little crazy out here. So I need a good warranty. So they offered a great warranty, but so we outfit the whole thing. I, I, I order all the parts myself for the most part. 
um, online, right? I'm an online shopper, believe it or not there, Preston. And uh, so we get solar panels from Canada. Um, I get the desk is made in America, custom desk. It is a full desk that I have dual monitors in there. I've got a custom built client desk in there as well. Um, we've got, so the solar panels on the roof so we can power the entire thing on its own. We use cradle point modems, which is the same that like firefighters, EMTs, police officers used to have internet on the road. Fantastic device. And then, so I bring it to Freeman's Car Stereo local, locally here in Lake Norman area. They outfit it for me. I send all the parts to them, right? They get all the 18 wheeler deliveries to their front door. Thankfully, not to my front door and they outfit the entire thing for me and it, they i give them some lateral right because those are the creative guys they're, they're the ones who know hey in the interior of this vehicle this is what i want now put your flash on it so they really added up some cool new features in our newest iteration we've got uh, built-in seats for the clients to sit in as well we added um led tvs in there um, as well. So that way, we, when e-closings really start picking up, which we're hopeful is going to continue to progress, um, that's one positive of COVID is the whole, uh, you know, um, technology factor. So utilizing an Apple TV to airplane, an iPad to airplay it to the TV in the van, so completely paperless. We are prepared for that if the lending institutions would get on board with it as well. So they're pretty self-sufficient, which is great. Um, the, like I said, the solar being the big piece, the internet on the road, so I can do my title updates, we can record on the road, um, really get it going. So rather than brick and mortar, hey, we can go to any county we want to and get this thing done. Awesome, awesome. So I, and I, I, my next question, you kind of, I think, already answered it, but I just want to clarify. So my worry, or, you know, I'm just always devil's advocate, like, well, not devil, but, you know, sure. where, where are the potential problems here? So you have all kinds of in closings that I've ever been involved, you know, there's always or possibly some last minute, like, wait, wait, we got it. So you have all kinds of uh, capability as far as internet and stuff to, you know, if there is some last minute thing that somebody has to be gotten in touch with and something has to be faxed or, oh, well, I don't know if fax is still a thing, but. That's a good one. That's a good one. <laughs> I'm dating myself, <laughs> but you know what I'm saying? Like there, yeah. it seems like a lot of times, sometimes at closing every once in a while, there's something that has to be gotten last second. So do you have all the internet and phone capabilities to make that happen? Yeah, yeah, we do. The, the short answer is yes. But the funny thing is, Preston, you're talking about delays and stuff. You know, when Trip first came out, everyone was in a panic, right? Because it was like, oh, the three-day disclosure rule, the three-day disclosure rule. It, it, we're back to the wild, wild west, Preston. I'm sure you're hearing that on your end, too, from the inspections, I can only imagine. But from a closing perspective, I mean, we're changes last minute, you know, hey, lenders are asking, hey, what time is your closing at? I'll have your package to you right at the time, right? Um, and, and and that's not the lender's fault, I don't think. That's that's just the market, right? Because right, of right. how crazy it is, these quick timelines and these contracts, right? I'm sure you're getting, hey, I need my inspection yesterday, right? Like, yeah. I'm sure you're getting that request too. So it's, it's across the board, the expectations that are being set in the marketplace, are difficult to meet to say to, to nonetheless but yeah so we've got a printer in the van as well um you know again full internet access we got full access to our server here at the office i'm very big on internet security right wire fraud all that stuff right, right, that's been right, going right. on for years now I, I took the time years ago and really laid a good foundation i believe um, to stay on top of it we do um you know intensive training here at our firm for internet security as well continuously um and and technology i mean if we're going to use technology we've got to put the right protocols in place and being able to adapt right i, I think um i'll tell you my, my people like it when i leave the office right i stop bugging <laughs> them so much so so hey Justin, just stay out there and sit on the road for about an hour uh, when i come in it's like i think i, I mess everything because i'm like hey, let's do this and it and it's like i wish you would leave so we can get organized again. That's i right. think i just unorganized <laughs> him. that's right well um a couple of couple of questions um yeah. how do you you know because i i I've seen your thing and, I, and you, you do a great job marketing and stuff. And every once in a while, I think I was like, man, how does he schedule that? Like, like, you, you know, because we have problems. I mean, not problems, but it's always a challenge, right? Because we sure. have Oarsville, we have York, South Carolina, we have, you know, we, we Troutman, we go out to Gastonia, we go, you know, out to, I, I mean, Wadesboro. I mean, it's all over the place. So I can't imagine how, I mean, how do you, how it, how do you do that? How do you schedule it? And how do, and, and does it affect, I remember when I went to real estate school way long time, I was in the nineties. That tells you how old I am. Um, 
you know, I remember there was some tax advantage to closing at the end of the month, but somebody told me that's not even a thing anymore, but it's just such a tradition. So do they all mm -hmm. stack up at the one particular time of the month or anyway, I'll just question. Listen. No, no, you're good. No, I, I'm, I'm with you on all of that. It's, it's kind of funny because even like you being a home inspector, me being a closing attorney, it's, it's interesting how both of our, our thought processes overlap, right? Isn't that amazing the way that works in real estate? But um, the normal cycle is still in place for the month. It's, it's always blows my mind where, you know, like middle of the month right now, like it's pretty calm, right? It's not, it's not the right. end of the world, right? It's still busy, right? Just in general, because the market, but it's right now is pretty calm. But then, you, you know, we look at the calendar for the last week of the month, right? It's like, what is happening on the last week of the month that everyone has to close that day, right? Yeah, and, yeah. And I, and I don't know if it's more so like a particularness of, the understanding of prepaid interest, right? Which is, I think, what you're talking about there when you're saying a loan, right? Prepaid yeah, interest, I knew mean, there was some years. interest tax, some some advantage. I, but somebody I'll told me honest, that's not really a thing anymore. But I'll be honest with you, thinking back, like that concept, even even four years in as an, as an agent, it's still that concept really didn't dawn on my mind when it related to scheduling closes. I always just thought, hey, you know, we're kind of in the middle of the month, you know, let's call it like a round of 45 day close. You go with the 30 at the end of the next month, right? We'll just close by then. I think that's the generalness of it is like, hey, you know, last week of the month, is that good for you guys with your schedule? And it just kind of happens. Um, but these days, you know, with a 14, 21 day close, it, it really just all depends on when you get under contract, right? Um, I, I, I'll say that um, I, I wish I would have learned. Did you ever watch the show Family Matters? Sorry. I'm yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. So, so, did I do uh, that? <laughs> yeah, Steve Urkel, right? So Steve yeah. Urkel, and then there was Stefan, right? How he had the machine. And he figured out how to clone himself to where he could, you know, have both <laughs> Steve Urkel and Stefan. I haven't figured out how to clone myself, right? So that, that's one of the pieces I'm trying to think about. Uh, but I say that because it's not a you know solo effort here. It's it's definitely team based. I'm very fortunate to have put together a great team um, and people that really care about providing quality of service. So uh, our current associate Miles, I got him running and gunning pretty much everywhere I can stick him to right now when I can't be there, and he's he's a good sport about it. So it, it's. Some of it might be hazing, but some of it is just business. So uh, a little bit of both. And I'm sure it's the same for you. You got to have a great team to do as much as you guys are doing. Mike. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And it, I mean, you know, we make it work. I don't Well, we the, the folks in the office and not me. I, I call them the bosses, right? The, the yeah, bosses are really the ones credit for that. Stuff. But they yeah. somehow are magicians the way they yeah. they get it all scheduled somehow. But yeah. I understand, you know, it's 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 a bit of a jigsaw puzzle challenge -y thing every day. So, yeah. It works out, works out. Hello, I'm Bill Gallagher with Superior School of Real Estate, and I'm here with Preston Sandlin of Home Inspection Carolina. Preston, I've always liked your style, especially those pants, and also I've been interested in the home inspection business for a long time. Well, Bill, that's ironic. I've always admired your style, and I've always admired your ability to educate these fine folks for sometimes four, eight hours a day. I wish that I could do what you do. Hey Preston, wouldn't it be cool if we switched? Preston, we sure got what we wished for, buddy. We sure did. And now that you're the expert, Bill, I mean, you are wearing the pants. And I'm the instructor and the educator. Tell us what Home Inspection Carolina is doing these days to make the home buying process easier for realtors and home buyers. Well, Preston, all our home inspection reports now are online for the real estate agent and the client to review the report online mm -hmm. and to be able to create a repair list basically online by either clicking repair, accept, monetary compensation, and once they prepare the request, they can then press email, text, or print right then. You mean it's all automated, Bill? Absolutely. We are high tech. Wow. What else is Home Inspection Carolina doing different these days? Well, Preston, we're training our home inspectors to be non-alarmist. We are training them to put things into perspective and to simplify the message for the whole homeowner. Non-alarmist is key, Bill. You remember those days of the 100-page reports and those three-ring binders that would just go on and on and on, la, 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 la. Thank you for being a good non-alarmist. And Preston, one more thing. We fix the small stuff for free. Do you remember when home inspectors always put those little nitpicky items on those reports? Oh, bless their hearts. 
Well, at Home Inspection Carolina, if we can fix it in five minutes or less, we do it for free. We're better with a caulk gun than a keyboard any day. We just fix it. You, you mean there's no cost for this, Bill? Preston, it's free. Wow. Well, Preston, these pants really are a catch. Well, Bill, I've enjoyed wearing the suit, but I don't think I could wear it every day because I got to fix the small stuff for free and I don't want to ruin a good suit. Preston, it's been a lot of fun flipping the switch. That's right. Well, let me ask you this. I, I, I definitely have some more questions, but, but before we get into that, and I'll, I'll ask again at the end, um, if, if there's a real estate agent out there or a broker or whatever, uh, or buyer seller that, that's definitely interested in what you do and, you know, how's it, how is it, you know, the process work, how would they, you know, what the lead time is and all that, um, would, uh, is there your website, where, where would you direct them to? Yeah, that's a great question. Yeah, the website's the best for us. Um, I've really wanted to be as transparent as possible, right? We always talk about in real estate, put it in writing, right? Disclose in writing, disclose in writing. So for me, it's it's our website, closehere.com. That's our website, closehere.com. And on the website, we've got an array of resources. We've got our fees we even post on there. So if you're utilizing the standard offer to purchase a contract, whether that be resale, vacant land, or new construction, it's the standardized fees that we've got on our website. And we even list the add-ons, like let's say you need a power of attorney, right? There's always some kind of random situation that you might need a power of attorney or some kind of document. But again, those general fees are listed on our website and our online scheduler. Um, we are very big. Even if you email us, call us, come in talking about, here's my offer purchasing contract. It's executed. Can you sign page 15 for the earnest money, right? Et cetera, et cetera. We're still going to direct you to the online scheduler because for me, you've got to have a starting point in a file. And the way we can offer quality of services, every single transaction starts at the singular same point, and that being our online schedule, which can be accessed at closehere.com. Now, that's for residential. Um, commercial, if it's just literally a one-off commercial property, same thing. Uh, we do work with several commercial developers, so that's a little bit different of a process, right? Commercial real estate is different than residential. Those who kind of toy in both can tell you, I don't know if you do any commercial as well, pressing a whole different animal when you're talking about commercial so awesome tell, tell the website one more time what was it yep closehere.com that's great man that's great yeah. that's smart too i mean nothing against the last name but i i was trying to find it and i was like because yeah. forget forget trying to say it imagine trying to spell it all yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, I, i'm not a good speller to begin with <laughs> i mean i literally forget the i and the e in my middle name like it's i before e or e before i yeah. <laughs> except when it's preston and Neighbors and way or something like that, right? There you go. There you go. <laughs> I'm a better inspector than I am a spy. <laughs> well, you know, I, I, this is the same question I ask every agent, but you were probably uniquely qualified uh, for for COVID. But my question is, how has COVID changed the way, uh, you know, in your opinion, the way real estate's done? And the, I don't know if it's changed anything in the way you do business because you were kind of already set up uh, COVID, you know, for. I'm not going to say you were set up for COVID, but you kind of had the setup that, that that helped out, I'm sure. Yeah, it's kind of wild. Um, you know, I heard a lot about of attorneys doing parking lot closings, they were calling it and things like that for um, after COVID hit. And we didn't miss a beat. I'm going to be honest with you. No, we had to change some safety protocols, right? Social distancing, masks, that kind of thing. I'm a big handshaker. So like it was, re there's some really awkward times. In the yeah, meeting. it's kind of like lie. elbows or something now. It was very weird. No, I, not even elbows, just people would look at me like, are you, are, are you even a, aware of what's going on in the world right now? So just awkwardly, but uh, no, yeah, the, the mobile closings is, has, we saw an increase significantly in 2020. The mobiles, a big part of it had to do with the refi boom. Right. A lot of people doing refinances because the interest rates were so low and they didn't want to leave their house. So it enabled us to come there. And even if we, you know, I did plenty where I was standing in the front yard. You know what I mean? And I had some, they were passing the documents back and forth from their window outside to me and uh, all kinds of stuff. You know, there was some emergency legislation that allowed for, um, 
uh, notarization over, you know, electronically over Zoom. Not they had a wet sign it, but we could be on Zoom and they could notarize. I could notarize the document they signed. Um, so there was a lot of that going on. It's been interesting though the way the market has shifted back to. It's been kind of a teeter, right? Like a, like a seesaw. Like okay, you can go outside, you can go back. No, go yeah. back home. Go back. Come on, go back. Go back. But one of the biggest things I think that's been shifted is the concept of working from home for people, right? And yeah. and how if everyone was working from home, all of a sudden it was kind of like, well, wait a second, I got to work from home. We need a bigger house. We got to, yeah. we got to, we got to do something here, honey. Or, right. or man, we have a much bigger house than we actually need. Sales prices are looking pretty good and we can cash out right now. Let's go ahead and do right. that. Right? right. There's been a little bit of both depending on your personal scenario. Um, but, but overall, from a residential perspective, the other added thing, I, I, I think for everyone in North Carolina, that's been pretty amazing and South Carolina too, the market, as far as the jobs go here in North Carolina and South Carolina, I don't know if you've noticed driving down the street, Preston, but everybody's hiring. Oh, yeah. Everybody is hiring right now. Hey, we're hiring too, by the way, in case you know any <laughs> paralegals or attorneys. Um, but everybody's hiring right now, and it's really keeping the demand high. You know, there's a lot of businesses moving to North Carolina and South Carolina. Did you see Red Bull coming to Concord? Did oh, really? That? I didn't know it's that. Like a $500 million bottling facility going wow. on in Concord, North Carolina. Old Mac Brewery just got um, the Cornelius Planning Department just approved a, a second secondary location for old Mac here in Cornelius. Um, so just so much growth taking place all around Charlotte and the surrounding areas. And it's creating a demand for housing, right? Because if jobs come in, um, people got to have somewhere to live, right? And, and so I think that from a residential perspective, um, I, I have a hard time believing that this is going to slow down really anytime soon. The problem, I think, becomes the conversation of affordability, right? What is that? Uh, really yeah, I'm worried anymore? about that too. I'm worried about and that too. I think that becomes part of the conversation. But the second piece of commercial, um, I, I think, it, I think it's going to be sector specific, right? Industrial right now is doing very, very strong. Office is kind of teetering. I think there's some of the big banks are talking about people having to come back in. So we'll see kind of how that plays out fourth quarter of 2021. Um, you know, I hope retail does well, right? I, I certainly hope the best for retail. Um, amazing how you have to wear a mask everywhere, but I can go to a Panthers game and not have to wear a mask with my other 80,000 people. You go to a college football game, you don't got to wear one either. I, I find that uh, interesting, but again, probably a different conversation. Today. Yeah, boy, we can um, get into the mask. Okay, <laughs> the rules for me and not for me. Yeah, I better. yeah. so, uh, but I, I think real estate in general is poised to do very, very well, particularly in North and South Carolina. It's, I don't know if it's the drinking water or what, but but everyone's liking it here. In well, the you, you know, and part of what you said, too, a, a lot of people realize now they can be location independent, you know, and a lot of people, you know, nothing against up north or whatever. But if you can live anywhere, I, you know, I'm not so sure I want to deal with the winners anymore. <laughs> the taxes. A lot the taxes. of people, North Carolina is a nice destination. And like a lot of people, what do they call it? Halfbacks. They go to Florida. It's too hot there. So they come halfway back. <laughs> yeah, a little bit of that going on. I think a lot of people find some second homes, right? If you look at the Western region of North Carolina, right? A lot of retirees, a lot of people buying some investment properties and second homes. I think that's booming right now. A lot of, a lot of big dollar hedge funds coming into the Charlotte and oh, Raleigh yeah. area right now too. So you got to wonder from a, a rental market perspective, what that's going to do and um I, I, just a lot of activity, a lot of activity right a lot of activity so it's, it's hard activity. to wonder where it's going to land right that's that's part of it well i'm gonna shift gears just a second here before we get to the lightning round yeah um now i know you're you know you're not a practicing agent neither am i we both have our license i mean as far as like you know the only thing i've ever bought is my own house but um what, but you around a lot of agents and you know a lot of agents and your father, you know, I mean, you might have a unique perspective on this question. You, you come across a lot of agents and some are like really successful and, and some kind of struggle. And I've always kind of wondered, you know, and I'm sure there's multiple things, but what, what do you think the difference is the, the, or what, what are the ones that are successful doing? What, what, what do you, do you, if there was a common ingredient, what would you think it would be? That's a good question. Um, 
and just to clarify just a little bit. So I do a little bit on, on my own. Oh, do you? Okay. I, I don't, I don't go repping, repping clients that, that often anymore. It's very rare, um, pretty much family. And I probably shouldn't do that. You know, there's that old rule. You probably shouldn't represent your own family. Uh, <laughs> but I do some, some, some own development stuff for myself. I've sw switched from residential to commercial. I'm a, I'm, I'm a raw land kind of guy these days, press, you know, God's not making any more of that. So I, I try to as much as I can. So, um, but from a, from a secret sauce perspective, I, I think back to, to the two main principles my dad taught me. Uh, one is make your dials. Cold calling is how I learned uh, the fundamentals of real estate, being able to pick up a phone and call someone and either sell them a house or get them to let you sell their house, right? Uh, it was definitely, a, I think, a dying art. Um, but internet, you know, internet leads are what it's all about. The second is, is more of a mindset of don't assume you know everything. I got to be honest with you, there's a lot of people that I come across in a day, and I know that tensions are just high right now. I think, you know, we all need to chill out a little bit because I, I'll tell you that the, the nastiness, the nastiness of some people in this game right now are, is just, yeah. it's like, I, and I meet some of these people, right? Some of these big names, big names that people would know that I would never, I would never throw anybody under the bus, but some big names that I, and I think to myself after I met that person, I'm like, not what I expected. Not, not, a, not a nice person. And, and I, and I'm shocked by it. I'm like, like the persona that's out there is, oh, super success and uh, 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 oh, having a great time. But you go through a transaction with some of these people and it's like, not worth it. Not worth it, Press. I'm not going to lie to you. I, I, I used to, you know, I used to want to take over the world. And then I reached a point where I'm like, you know what, if I'm happy, I'm happy. And I'd rather have that than deal with a bunch of drama. Um, so, so hum being humble, I I'll be honest with you, the pe the agents that are humble and they call us and they don't act like they know everything. You, you catch a lot more flies with honey than vinegar, I think is what the old saying is. So it's, um, it's definitely a mindset. I think it's important. So there you go. There you go. Well, and I, I, I know some too, and it, it, it's funny, you know, there, there's some that are, are exactly what you would think that super nice super you know oh yeah there's good. a lot of great agents they, they treat the vendors well yeah. they you yeah. know they 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 want everybody to win and there's some that i mean honestly i feel like they feel like vendors are expendable you know what i mean like and if something yeah. goes wrong in the transaction somebody's got to get blamed <laughs> and so, anyway, somebody's I'll getting thrown under the bus Preston, and it ain't gonna be them yeah, be exactly so. <laughs> no but part of that too i think is is you know, the volume you're doing, and I'll just take a number. Let's say, let's say you were doing a hundred home inspections a month in your whole company, right? I know it's much more than that, but let's just say a hundred for you, right? One, one less only moves the needle so much, but in a market where we've got the lowest potential inventory compared to the demand that we've ever had in a marketplace. So for an agent, right? The average agent, let's say that they do four deals a year. You take away one out of the four, that's 25% of their income. Yeah. The stakes are much higher, right? When you're talking about that percentage basis than for someone like you and I, who are more on a volume level, right? right? right. And I think that's what contributes to the mindset. But, but again, one of the pieces being from, a, from the mindset perspective, we're a team. Yeah. Right. If you're a buyer's agent and you're hiring a home inspector, you're picking a closing attorney, you know your client's using a particular lender. Why, why would there be any negativity coming out of your mouth about any of those vendors if they're on your team? Yeah. It, when that happens, I say to myself, that agent probably isn't a very good leader if they're bringing people down rather than trying to help them rise to the occasion. I think again, that's a, that's more of a sales and like kind of team company um, art skill, right? If you will, but I, that that I think is getting lost on. You know, a lot of people are, might be good at real estate, might be good at marketing, but not all of them are entrepreneurs. So. Right, right. And I and I do want to clarify that uh, there are a lot that are really great, and I don't want to. Yes. You know, I don't want to be yeah. like you know. I know some. But the ones that are great don't oh, care, right? They don't they don't care what I'm saying right now because they know what they're doing. Right. They right. know that they're. I don't want to be like, oh, all people who do well are. Rich no, 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 no. not at no. all some are exactly what you think and like some are like wow i just want to be around that person because they just exude some of them i, some of them I harass say hey will you teach me what you're doing yeah so I, they're just, they exude like yeah. positivity and 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 yeah. you know just no doubt 
you have no doubt why they're doing well. Yeah. But, you know, the ones that kind of drive me nuts are the ones that just, you know, they think I'm expendable, you're expendable. You know, they go through them. They go through them all, and then they cycle back around. <laughs> They'll come back around about but a year know, later because the they've gone cyclical. through all the, all the other. They've cycled exactly, through. and the market's cyclical like the people are cyclical sometimes. You know, I, and I remember I, 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 I live through some of these down markets, and it's hard. You know, real estate's hard. A lot of people get into a thing that's going to be easy, and it's not easy. So I, for the people that survive, you know what I mean? It's admirable. There's something to be said about that. If you've been in this game long, Longer than uh, I'll say seven years, right? If you've been in real estate as an as a full time broker for seven years, kudos because it's not easy. You have, you have accomplished something that many 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 people fail at. And and hey, hey, let's get a beer sometime, right? Like that's that's it. So well, speaking of getting a beer, last question before the lightning round. Yes. And keep in mind, it's a G rated show here. Speaking of drama, okay. sorry. Drink. Let's get a soda. Let's get a soda. My All bad. right, soda. Uh, what is the craziest or weirdest or craziest thing that you've had at or somebody you're associated with uh, and you can change names to protect the guilty? <laughs> uh, you know, and I, you know, I have a home inspection podcast too, by the way, and I always ask this question. Yeah. What's the craziest thing you've ever found <laughs> on a home inspection? And you crazy I, could only, I couldn't even imagine what there's some stuff about. i had to bleep out and say have you got a second one <laughs> itunes yeah. might like uh get rid of my podcast but put that on there but what there, there's definitely some awkwardness right i think awkwardness is kind of one of those things but it's actually a story that not i experienced but i'll tell one that miles had uh kind of fairly recently actually um goes to a mobile closing right um, and, and unfortunately it's a divorce situation um, which, which already from a closing attorney's perspective right. tightens our senses because there's got to be particular signatures on the paperwork, right? right. And, and when, the, when, when things are heated, uh, leverage, right, is what people will utilize to get a deal done, right? Like, no, I'm not signing that unless you give me this, right? That happens more often than you think. But he's at the closing and they were not on the same page, these soon to be <laughs> ex-spouses. And uh, they start yelling at each other in the front yard, from what I'm told, right? They're just yelling. Yeah, is he doing, he's doing a mobile closing, but they're in he's the He's doing room. a mobile closing. He's in their driveway and like, uh, and then like they end up in the van. Oh right? boy. Like, and they're like yelling and at Both at the same time. Yeah. And so Miles tells me he kind of ends up like tucked in the back corner, like, like. It's a good thing it's not the, right? the Cherokee anymore. At least you got a little <laughs> more room in the <laughs> transit. The, the Cherokee was so old, I would have just abandoned it. Right? Like, that's, <laughs> <laughs> that's, 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 so at one point, Miles tells me like, hey, he finally took his shot. When they got out and after the paperwork was signed, he just took off. And like one of them's trying to flag him down. Wait, more questions, more questions. And he just takes off. So pretty hysterical story. We got. At least I thought it was funny. He didn't think it was funny in the moment, but. I thought it was pretty good. So that's yeah. probably one of the more awkward ones. You know, people are people. So. Yeah. I uh, own our house. We bought way back in 2000, I think. Yeah. Uh, over on uh, right by RGK. Uh, and we had a pool, uh, Wind Ridge Estates. We were buying it um, from a couple that was getting divorced. And uh, yeah. I, I could tell they weren't uh, like, because I wanted him to show me the stuff with the pool. And like, she lived there. He had moved out. And like they had to figure out a time when he could come and she wasn't there. I mean, like it was kind of like that. But anyway, this was back before like Dodd Frank and all that, I think. Yeah. Uh, so they both had to come to close it. You could just feel the tension, you know, and like did they sit next to each other? Kind of like, but I think maybe the attorney was between them or something. Oh gosh. <laughs> and uh <laughs> dude, I'm a talker, man. I can't yeah. help it. I just create conversation, you know, and it was tough and Boy, I just stuck my foot. Have you ever stick your foot in your mouth like, hey, we oh, love God. the house. We we hope it brings us as much happiness as it uh, uh, uh well uh we love it. <laughs> you, know, just, you ever get going down a sentence and you're like, uh oh, I didn't mean for the sentence to end this way. Can I change it? <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And it was just you it was one of those deals, man. I, I imagine yeah. as soon as they got out, they ran too. They were yeah. like, uh but they probably said, where's my money? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but, anyway. All right. So let's move on to the lightning round. All right. Okay. You're going to like mentally this. preparing for it. You keep calling this lightning round. And I don't know what, I don't know any <laughs> idea what these questions are going to be. All right. So. James, this or that. And you okay. may be too young for this, but I bet you, I bet you get it. Ginger Marianne. Oh, uh, From Gilligan's Island. Yeah. Are you too uh, young? I mean, I know the show, but I'm trying to think back to, 
Ginger was the movie star and, and Marianne was the farm girl from Kansas or something. I'd rather hang out with Skipper because he was a lot more fun than the dog, hey. so I, I'll pick him. All right, football or basketball? Ooh, football. All right, can you finish the lyrics to this song? All right, hang, hang on, listen. If it's if it's any close to the Gilligan's Island time frame, I don't know. I don't know. Are you setting me up for failure right now? Oh, man, where is it? I got it on – here we go, hang on. Oh man, finish those songs. No, yeah, I'm, I'm not gonna be able to. I'm not gonna lie to you. I'm not gonna I gonna fought lie. the law and the law one. I was trying to think of something to do with law. No, yeah. that, that was a good. I, I'm not gonna. It's not you. It's me, Preston. Okay, it's one of those <laughs> scenarios. So you sound like uh like you're breaking up with me, Justin. <laughs> it's not you. It's me. <laughs> you know when it starts off that way. You know what that yeah. usually means? No, it is you. Yeah. <laughs> it is you. When they say it's not you, it's me. It's you. <laughs> I've had that one before. Yeah. Good stuff. I was trying to think of a song that was law or something. Uh, you know, I'll be, I'm not up on like the new age stuff either. Yeah. And like some of the old, old stuff. I don't know. I'm kind of like this weird in between. I, I like classical music. Yeah. How I'm old are you? That way. I, I am 31 years old. 31. Okay. Yeah. I forget. I'm 52. So I'm like, yeah. <laughs> what year were you born? Would that 1990. be? Oh my gosh, you make me feel old, brother. On the same time you were in your real estate class, right? There you go. I was in college. <laughs> All right. Um, now here's another old one, but I'm sure you've seen these movies. Uh, well, not this one. This one, I know you know. Would you go with Christmas Vacation or Elf? Ooh, Elf. Big Will Ferrell fan. Big Will Ferrell fan. Animal House or Caddyshack? Caddyshack, because uh, I prefer uh, the golf course to a toga party. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> celebrity crush Ooh, uh that's that's a good one uh i'm trying to think ah. and for all the people out there i didn't give them the I, a long time ago i used to give people the questions ahead of time but then i was like nah, i like the spontaneity you know i, I don't know yeah I, I guess i'm trying to think you know what i mean back to, um Come back to me on that one. I don't, right. know. I don't know. Liberty Crush. We'll come back to that. Uh, Netflix or YouTube? Uh, ooh, uh, I, I recently cut the cord, so I'm all about that YouTube TV. With yeah, you. we're doing that too. Love it. Yeah. Love it. And yeah. I can get it in every TV in the house now instead of yeah. – we used to have to get a stupid box – you know, well, I get way better sports with YouTube TV. Yeah, and you had to pay like sports. seven bucks a month for yeah. the. I mean, even when we did it, I was like, "This is antiquated." I mean, even I can watch App State every week now. I love it. I'm good. I'm like, if I can get a, 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 a an internet signal anywhere in the house, I should be able to get any channel anywhere in the house. Yeah. And finally, that that's come true. If you got a Fire Stick or whatever, or well, the TVs now have it built in. Um, yeah. All right. Uh, would you rather make a phone call or a text? Ooh, phone call. iOS or Android. Ooh, iOS. iOS. I'm like the only – I'm old, man. I'm Everybody's iOS but me. I'm Android. I'm PC. Are, are you Mac or PC? I'm sure you're Mac. Uh, PC. Are you really? PC. Yeah. I, not that I don't like Mac. I have a Mac, but our main – main base is pc uh, mac mac can get just a little bit complicated with a lot of the stuff we utilize some of the applications and things like that so um it's a bit more on the technical side i guess you know yeah. compared to like a pc it's just click here use this. well my, my wife and my kids all have macs but and they'll tell you they can do all the like excel and word and all that but it's kind of like it's not as easy you know it, it's i don't know i'm like Change is hard for me, so <laughs> I'm old school. Um, pros and cons. Pros and cons. There you go. Would you rather go to a big party or a small gathering? Ooh, doo -doo -doo -doo. depends on the day. <laughs> beach or mountains? Mountains. Mountains. So if you had the choice of beach or mountain house, you would buy the mountains? No, for sure. I'd buy the whole mountain, Preston. The whole mountain. <laughs> What's worse to do, laundry or dishes? Do laundry. Because the time, right? Like dishes, I can keep going. Laundry, you gotta wait. I don't like. Yeah, that. LeBron or Michael? Ooh, two different positions. They're both good. They need to be on the same team. <laughs> uh, uh, tennis shoes or flip flops? Flip flops. Um, most important in a partner. I don't. Are you married? I, I don't even know. If yeah. You're... 
Yeah. Right, your wife's gonna watch this. Yeah, that's why. That's why the celebrity crush is like, oh, I better watch it. No, <laughs> no. Um... Most well, most important in a partner, intelligent or funny? Mm, funny. Um, car or truck? Truck. Um, just a couple more. Would you rather have a day at a theme park or at the beach? Is it a water park? Good water park. Water park. All right. Uh, I don't like salt water and sand. So. There you go. Uh, iced coffee or hot coffee? Hot coffee, just black. Don't 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 be cutting my coffee down. <laughs> keep, keep it straight black. That's it. Would you rather read a regular book or an ebook? Mm, definitely an ebook. I, I'm I don't that so well. I print I print things off and read it. So it's not like a book. It's more just like copy paper. Uh, but e I read a lot of electronic stuff. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, and the most important this or that. Toilet paper, over or under? Are you a beard or a mullet on the toilet paper? Whatever's there. <laughs> really? Some people are very particular, man. No, nah, I, I just, you know, if I need it, I need it. So it's kind of one of those things. It's more of like, uh, you know, you, you don't really have a choice, maybe. I don't know. I, most, peop most people are uh, a beard, you know, so it's over, you know, like it comes in. So, I mean, I literally know so many people, even inspectors, because I'm on a bunch of forums, they'll change it. They can't. No, like, stop it. I'm like, man, don't be messing with people's toilet paper. Don't touch <laughs> that doo doo paper. Don't you do that? Sorry, but I, I do shit. say for all the listing agents out there, if you got a vacant house, please make sure you have toilet paper. Um, but going back to the, the other question I or don't around. have toilet paper, so nobody you man put a sign up that says no toilet paper so that people won't use the bathroom. There you go. Ah, that's there you go. I can Let tell them no, it doesn't exist in this house. There you go. I and no soap you. and no soap. Boom. <laughs> then, then you're gold. Yeah, I you know it's tough as a home inspector, like um. You know, part of our job is we have to go into crawl space and, uh, you know, I tell all my guys, you know, hey, man, bring your own towel, bring your own, for goodness sakes, don't go wash your hands. And, you know, because there's always the towel that you're not supposed to use that is the towel. <laughs> it's just for looks. Don't use that towel, you know, because we've been crawling in the crawl space and hands are dirty yeah. and all that stuff. Oh, yeah. Um, let me circle back to that last question. Um, celebrity crush. Not to yeah, I was, I was actually thinking about that in the back of my mind. I'm going to, you know what I'm going to say, I'm going to say Kevin Hart, you know, not, and, and from a, from a man crush. So just a cool celebrity. I think I'd love to meet, uh, dude's funny. The dude's oh, funny. Yeah. his older stuff more than his new stuff, but I, I think he would just be funny to hang out with. So. Yeah, no, no, he's, he's great. I, I was listening to a uh, book. He did an audible book a while back and, uh, it, it's good, but I yeah. made the mistake. My kids were younger then and they were in the car. I had to like, Ooh, I got to listen to this one. Though. Yeah. <laughs> it was a little bit of language, yeah, <laughs> but uh, I mean, he reads it himself. It was, I forget the name yeah. of it. I, I, I'm on a member of audible, but uh, good yeah. stuff. Awesome. Well, Justin, thank you so much, brother. How again, can people find you and uh, get in touch with you, follow you. If, if, and if you got value on this, please go to his Facebook page and give him some likes Tell us about all your inter internet properties, I guess. Yeah. So again, the website close here.com. That's the best way. If you want to get some resources, see our fees, schedule a closing, right? Close here.com. We are on Facebook because that was law PLLC is the Facebook page. Um, check it out. If you have any questions, reach out. Happy to uh, start a relationship with you because person, like, you know, man, it's all about relationships. So we're happy to help. Um, we're not just a one-off, you know, one-off transaction kind of firm. We want to see you succeed in this industry and I uh, want to do what we can to help. So awesome. I'll, I'll also, I'll put the, uh, that link in the uh, description when it went out. Okay. Awesome. Cool. All right, Justin. Well, I appreciate it, brother. I don't want to hold yeah. it up. I'm sure you got to drive out to some closings or something. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Preston. Good to see you. All right, brother. Have a good one. You've been listening to the Successful Real Estate Broker Podcast with your host, Preston Sandlin. Join us on the next episode where we'll be talking to a successful agent or vendor about the right things to do and the wrong things you should avoid. Join us on the next episode of the Successful Real Estate Broker Podcast.